marsh here. It's one of their main access points, I think. And they crawl through all this vegetation, but they can do it. And they are able to come out here um, onto the sandy area. Uh, I'm Cassie Cook. I'm a master's student at the um, College of Women, Mary, in the biology department. And I'm Allison McCluskey. I'm a rising senior and undergrad in the geology and environmental science departments. I am interested in looking at how an invasive grass, Phragmites australis, impacts the nesting of the diamondback terrapin. So we go out to their nesting beaches here on Fisherman Island, which is a refuge owned by the Fish and Wildlife Service. And the terrapins come ashore, they spend most of their time in tidal creeks and salt marshes, but every year the females come ashore to sandy nesting areas. Um, it's dunes inland um, near these marshes, and they lay their nests. And uh, Phragmites is kind of recently expanding along the Atlantic coast. And I'm interested in and in seeing how Phragmites could possibly impact the success of these terrapin nests. We're interested in seeing predated nests and how those um, nests interact with the vegetation. So how much vegetation and or Phragmites is present there. And if that, if the presence of Phragmites will impact, um, have a higher rate of raccoon or crow predation as a result. Ooh, we got a terrapin. Ooh, oh. hello. So this is a mature female terrapin. Um, you can see they have nice orange plastrons, which is one of the features of them. And their backs have these diamond shaped grooves, which is another big indicator. So terrapins have temperature dependent sex determination for their hatchlings. So cooler temperatures will produce males and warmer temperatures will produce females. So if Phragmites is shading and cooling the soil, temperature around these nests, I think that it could skew the population to having a lot of males that are produced out of these nests. If you follow that path down the road into the future, I think we could potentially have this, this nesting population locally go extinct if we're just producing males and we don't have any adult females anymore. This, we found, this is predated nest one, 165. So, it's, the raccoons are, are doing some work out here. People do kind of make Phragmites out to be this kind of end-all species that destroys everything. But on the other hand, there can be a lot of ecosystem benefits, um, stabilizing shorelines um, and stuff like that. So I am kind of, I don't know, doing some ground truth things, seeing if it's really this bad thing that everybody thinks it is, or Maybe it's not as bad, um, particularly for this one species, maybe there is a management strategy that can be effective. <laughs>